day one here on the world's most vast freshwater lake. My mission for this trip, exploration. My motivation, wanderlust. A year ago I traveled 200 kilometers down the wild north shore of Superior in an open canoe from an old silver mining town to the quaint town of Rossport. But somehow those magical miles didn't fully satisfy my curiosity. Once I got home, I wondered about some of the inland lakes I had breezed by. I had paddled along some islands big enough to contain sizable lakes within them, and with the hurdles of getting to those lakes, I imagined that they saw very few visitors. At the time, I felt like I had enough on my plate with the big lake, not to mention I was enjoying the lack of portages. But on this trip, I'm aiming to find out if I can get into some of those rugged lakes, and if so, to see what fish they might hold. I'm going to cook up some lunch here before making a couple of open water crossings to start this trip off. Just finished the first open water crossing of the trip. Nothing crazy, a kilometer and a half, but Superior is deadly cold, so I've got full dry suit on. Got pretty good conditions today, supposed to be pretty good tomorrow. And I need to make as much progress as possible in that time. Just finishing up the lagoon in the middle of Salter Island, which is a big one, but I'm heading across two kilometers to Simpson Island, even bigger island, and hopefully I'll set up camp before too long. Fighting a headwind, so probably better off waiting for tomorrow morning to try and make some progress. It's taken a laborious hour to get across these two kilometers, but I'm just about there. Made it. Now to find camp. Found home for tonight. Beautiful spot. Open views to the main lake with this island in the middle of this lagoon. Fantastic. Once I finish this first leg of the trip, I'm expecting to encounter some pretty tough bushwhack portages. So I've got a little bit of time to start lightening the load of the food barrel at least. Cheers. The site has all the amenities, including a chair, probably stolen from a local auditorium. Perfect grilling coals for these cheddar, jalapeno and cheddar smokies. And I'm gonna get this fire going again because it really helps keep the bugs off. Waste no time. Just waiting for scraps. It's 8.30 and I've got an alarm set for 4.30. So I'm gonna hit the hay, but let's have a look at the route. So today with a half day of travel, I went from Rossport and over here to the bottom of Simpson Island. Tomorrow I wanna get well into St. Ignace Island and then there's an inland lake there. I'm not sure if I'll divulge the name but uh, a number of them, as well as on Simpson Island, and that's my goal for this trip. I was hoping to hit some of them last year, but it was just too much to do all in one, going from Silver Islet to Rossport, that's 200 clicks. Thunder Bay is over this way, Marathon over here. It's just a spectacular area here. There's a good chance that the route would just be too difficult, too thick of bush, too rough terrain, and I'll retreat to other lakes. There are other interior lakes that I can try, including one right down here. Should be exciting too, but this one particular lake is the one I'd like to see. And it was a trip last year that really inspired this one. I paddled down from Sleeping Giant Provincial Park to Rossport, which is where I left from today, a small town here on the coast. And it was one of the most magical trips of my life. Nine days, nothing super long, 200 kilometers, but it was just pure magic.
big bright full moon this morning and last night. Gonna be on the water very early today. I love that. Full moon in front of me, first light behind. Off to a good start today. Found camp for the night, cozy little spot, won't be able to set up any kind of a sleep system, I'll just lay on the rocks here. I have no idea why I'm sleeping in here, but see ya. I live here now, pretty amazing. Creepy cave complete with spider web and everything, beautiful cave. Superior creates incredible fog banks sometimes, and you can see ahead just the tip of a hill lost in that fog. Oh my goodness. Check this out.
spot. It was too choppy to, to really be able to check this out last time. So cool to get to come back to the same place and experience completely different things. There's a big stick nest in this cave here. And another one exposed above that orange lichen. That was a really lovely paddle along Simpson Island this morning. I'm at the Moffat Strait, so this marks the end of Simpson Island, crossing over now to St. Ignace. Finished the crossing and I'm back to St. Ignace. Less than 10 kilometers to my target access point and then we'll see what happens from there. For lunch today, coffee, garlic bread, chili, and a multivitamin and a turmeric uh, supplement. It's supposed to help with joint pain. Camping a third of the year is a dream come true, but it takes a toll on the body too. Just had cheese and crackers this morning to get going quickly and take advantage of that morning calm. Still great conditions here around noon. But that meant no coffee, so. This is probably pretty uninteresting, but something just slipped back into place in my back. I don't know if I had a slip disc or something, what it was, I have no clue. I'm just using that term because I've heard it. I've had low, bad lower back pain for the last two plus months. It just slipped back into place and it's such a relief. Coming into the first spot that I want to try. It's just a kilometer ahead. It's so beautiful in here, making me even more excited for the potential of this area. But as you can see, there's some pretty tough terrain. I'm not going to be going up cliffs with the canoe or over these big hills. I'm going to have to find my way through through creeks and, and such that run down, I hope. We'll see. Tiger stripes. A crazy cliff. As my excitement grows for this potential lake, my hopes diminish. <laughs> Look at this terrain, like, I don't know, maybe it was wishful thinking. I studied the topo, of course, at home and satellite. Always looks possible at home on satellite. Pulling up to the first option. There's a little gravel beach here to set up a base camp and do some scouting if, if it seems possible. I mean, get out, have a look. It doesn't look too promising from here, but I wasn't expecting it to, so. I'll uh, walk back in the woods a bit and see what I'm dealing with. Felt pretty daunting when I pulled up to this beach. But look at this. A little trail. 
I thought to myself, maybe it's just beavers. Beavers wouldn't be breaking sticks off at that height. They could chew them off at that height, but they wouldn't snap them like that. And this is a trail. No way. I shouldn't be surprised because obviously I can't be the first person to want to get back here. Look at this. This is the dream. No way. It's going to take some clearing, but if this leads all the way there, that would that would be incredible. This trail started off going right toward the lake, the lakes that I was planning to access, but before long it turned and for the last three quarters of a kilometer it's been going along the coast. I can see Superior ahead now. This must be just a trap line or something. What a bizarre trail. That's all I can figure is it's a trap line. I haven't seen any old traps, any Martin traps or anything like that, so I don't know. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but someone's established a good trail here. It just doesn't go where I want it to go. On my way back to the canoe, I was looking for a turn that I might have missed. Sure enough, there was one, and it took me right to lake number one. I have no idea if it goes to the subsequent lakes, the lake I really want to hit, but I have to think so. This is a pretty small lake, and I don't think people would make this trail just for this lake, unless it's full of brook trout or something. But So, uh, I could get here today, but it would be a really long day. I'm going to set up camp at the other end, tackle this tomorrow morning. Very excited though. I'm going to clear this on the way back too. Beautiful pond on the way. Getting camp set up here. I brought the tent as well. Doesn't matter on the coast or no portages. I'm going to leave this tent here along with some other gear that I can do without to make these portages a little easier. They're going to be tough. It's, there's plenty of elevation gain. They're long. This first one's over a kilometer and there are plenty of blood sucking bugs on the way. Plus on Superior sometimes there's just really nice beaches to camp on and then yeah, it's nice to have the tent too. The variety is the spice of life. I'm spent. Long day. Up at 4.30. Got non-calzones tonight with cheese, fried onion. Yeah, it was a long day, but a fantastic day. Having my back pain go away, I've been dealing with it for two months. It was incredible. Let's hope that continues. Perfect timing before this strenuous work to get into these lakes. A wonderful paddle today to get here. Good conditions. And there's actually a trail here. Can't believe that. This is exactly just scouting this online on maps. I thought if I was going to make a trail, I would start it here. This is exactly where it was, so that was pretty cool. Can't wait for tomorrow. Can't wait to get into these lakes. Seems like the back pain's on its way out, but a new pain is on its way in. While I was making dinner, I tried to swat a mosquito on my upper thigh, and I sacked myself pretty badly. Eight thirty, back in the tent for the first time in a while, especially in bug season. I forgot the satisfaction of squishing the bugs against the mesh. Big day, awesome day, and I'm really excited for tomorrow. Very cool morning here for mid July. But I love it nice and cool like this. Makes the fire feel great. Coffee tastes great. For breakfast this morning, got what I call a backcountry burger and fries. It's a black bean mix patty. 
and hash browns for fries, non for a bun. But it's close enough. We've got mustard, cheese, ketchup in there. It's a burger. The sun just came over the hills behind me and now it's illuminating the horizon, which is awe-inspiring. Slept without back pain for the first time in a couple months, nine hours. Heading for a one-of-a-kind lake, I think. Today should be an amazing day. All packed up here and ready for portage number one. I'm leaving some things here behind at base camp, the tent. It'll be nice to get back to that. I'll plan to spend the night here when I get back. That'll just be nice to come back and have it done. Dry suit, don't need that. A dump would be cold in these lakes, but not lethal like here on Superior. This dry bag, which I was keeping the tent and some other stuff in, that can stay. My fuel, Trangia. Not expecting a ton of rain in there, so I should be able to cook with a fire or just have a cold meal now and then. A bunch of extra camera batteries and a power bank. My guide, which covers Superior, but not this random lake. Everything else is coming with. big part of this trip complete over a kilometer 1.1 kilometers tracked it on GPS over 300 feet of elevation gain and there's a hundred feet left to get to the final lake so most of it's done that's great bugs were plentiful but they they could have been swarming so it wasn't bad and take a good little fishing break before I head up the creek into the next pond and then there's the final lake. Paddle tail on a reasonably heavy jig, I think it's a half ounce. Try and get a little deep, I'm hoping that these are trout lakes. My lure just got assaulted by a four inch perch. That was not expected. It looks like a perch anyway. Got one, <laughs> definitely a perch. So small, thanks buddy. The creek continues downstream that way. I need to follow it upstream and I'm hoping that there's a trail somewhere along it. That's where I would make a trail if I was blazing one, but I don't see anything yet. Yep, found the next trail. I was shocked to find the first one. I would have been shocked if this one didn't exist if it just stopped here. to the next section of the creek which is full of minnows and I'm getting really excited now. That was a great trail, just 150 meters beside a waterfall. Awesome, so much easier than the first one. And Mount St. Ignis is coming into view here. I'm so close. Pretty impressive beaver dam here. Good eight feet tall if not more. I always find these beaver ponds so interesting. It's create a little world for themselves. Haven't seen any signs of trails into the final lake yet, but on satellite, the creek looked navigable through here. So far it is. And my plan when I thought I'd be bushwhacking was to take this creek as far as I could. Hopefully that's what whoever made these trails thought as well. I'm going to find a trail at the end of this. I'm running out of water now. And the shores are really sinky mud, so it's difficult to get around. End of the road. So close though. There's a fish. 
fisher up there. That's awesome. Oh, I just trotted off and missed him, but bushwhacking here trying to find a trail through. And there was a fisher right there. I've been scouting the last hour and a half looking for a trail into the main lake, and now I'm super conflicted. There's no good trail. I found a way in, but it gets rough toward the end. But more so, it just doesn't make sense that it would get so rough here. When I followed this rough path, it got better, but only when it started heading a different direction toward another lake. Definitely not heading the way I want. Decided I'm gonna go back to the pond, back up the creek, and look for a trail directly from the pond to the main lake. It just doesn't make sense that the trail would completely deteriorate here. Something doesn't smell right, so let's hope that's the case. Another part of the equation is that this is a linear route to get into this lake, so everything I do on the way in, I have to do on the way out. If I got in this way, I'd have to come out that way, and that doesn't sound very appealing. There's a little trail here. I'm pretty sure it's a beaver trail, but I'm gonna check it out. Yep, no dice, beaver trail. Another game trail heading along the shore. Hopes are starting to dwindle. Floating bog mat here, I can feel it bouncing under my weight. Certainly a trail here, but I'm sure it's gotta be just a beaver. Another dead end. Not many options left, not many possibilities left. Down to my last option here. And you might think, why not send this up right away and have a look? It's pretty much useless. The odds of being able to spot a trail amongst this jungle are, are pretty much nil. And I've never had virtually any success trying to do it. And I've done plenty of these exploratory trips, but I've come this far, I'm gonna try it at least. As you can see, nothing discernible. And, some, and sometimes it looks easy up there. It's not. That's a grind to get in there. So close yet so far. It's cool, you can see all sorts of game trails on the edges of the shoreline, even in the water. You can see where the beaver has been swimming around and working channels. So I don't know what to do now. Been mulling it over here for a while and I've decided to abort this mission gonna go explore some other lakes on these islands that excite me, stimulate my sense of adventure, but aren't brutal to get to. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> hopefully I can find some that are fun to get to. This has been fun to get to here thanks to the trails, but without them, this just becomes a grind. It's disappointing to pull the plug because as you can see from the air, it's a stunning lake, but I saw it from the top from Mount St. Ignis last year when I hiked up it, and that's gonna have to do. That also means going back all the way I came today, but that's not so bad because I'm going downhill this time and the trails are all clear, so. I'll get back for dinner and reset for tomorrow. Plowed through those trails back to camp. Got Dal Palak. First priority tonight is dinner. Need fuel. Well, it's hard to believe I went all that way just to turn back but still feels like the right decision to me. The only reason I would have kept going is to put on a show or for ego and to not want to admit that I was beat. It was, it was demanding and once I got close enough, I decided it wasn't worth it. Just gotta be accepting of failure on exploratory trips like this. And it's not really a failure. A lot of ways you could look at it, but from my perspective, it was a great day exploring. Stop trying to save face. Everyone saw that you suck. Excuse me, sir, I'm just trying to enjoy my scotch. Did you say scotch? Would you like to join me for a drink? Yes, I would. Scotch is my favorite. Did we just become best friends? Yep. 8.30, hitting the hay. I am totally wiped. And I'm waking up real early again tomorrow. Be on the water by before sunrise. 
to have good progress on Superior, hopefully in calm conditions, and find the next lake. Day four, on my way, breakfast to go. Granola with powdered milk, seeds, nuts, fruit, cinnamon. It's really good. Another potential camp for tonight back there. Beautiful little rock shelter. Super uncomfortable. Perfect. I might come back to it. It's a beautiful morning for paddling. Coming around Armour Island. Some cliffs ahead. This is amazing. No part of this lake is boring. And a nice sheltered harbor here. Looking for a trail to the next potential lake. Found a trail easily here. First place I checked. I'm gonna check it out. I'm not sure if I'll camp at the other end or come back, keep going today, no idea. So I'm gonna leave my main pack and some other things here. My water reserve, just bring over fishing gear and my food. Well, this lake looks pretty sweet. It was a short, flat, easy trail to get into. And I'm feeling really good about my decision to bail on the lake yesterday. It's a nice looking lake. Let's see if it has any fish. Hard hit within minutes. Most likely pike. If I'm lucky, brook trout. I wouldn't say it's fighting like a pike though and there's some weight there. It's foul hooked, that's why. And it is a pike. Yeah, it's hooked in the side of the back. That's why it felt so heavy. Let me get that out of ya. Let my hands. Upgrade from yesterday's three inch perch, but small pike. Not what I'm after, but thank you for the bite. About a minute and a half later, probably another small pike. Yep. Another bite. Minutes later, this one feels really small. Whoa, what a jump. Thank you. Most likely the same deal. And now the question, yep. The question is, can I weed through the small pike to find anything meaningful? That's right. Edge of the mouth. Barbless single hook. Comes right out. Thank you.
small one. Almost all of them hooked right in the corner of the mouth, which is perfect. Hard for them to shake it there. And clean release. This is a beautiful lake. Just the experience I was looking for. Got things back on track, six or seven pike. But there's nowhere good to camp. It's only 750 meters long, so it wasn't hard to explore at all. There's not a good spot to camp here. So I'm gonna move on, see what else I can find. Penne for lunch, rehydrated sauce and veggies, and sriracha, of course. Seen a lot of crazy rocks on this trip. These might be the weirdest. Just crazy. Working my way down Otter Cove. It's a huge bay that juts into San Ignis Island. Breeze is picking up, so is the chop, but I'm hoping to make camp soon somewhere here in the cove. Great spot here for the night on this island. Sweeping view. There's a fog bank rolling across the hills over there. It's pretty fun to watch. Turned out to be an amazing sunset last night. This morning, still trapped in fog. Cool breeze, coffee's gonna be good.
on my way for day five. Beautiful, eerie conditions here on the lake. And I'm not sure where I'll end up today, but lots of options to explore. Finally got a hook into something on Superior. Just keeping that rod bent. That's what keeps the barbless hook in, just tension. Yeah, pretty late trout. Get your hands good and wet, protect the slime on the fish. Slime is important for them, grab by the tail, support the belly. Quick look. And back you go, thank you. Nice. On the exposed outer coastline now, my breath's taken away by the beauty in this fog. to a more sheltered bay now, and it seems like the fog might be burning off. That was quite an experience though. I'm at the outlet of the next inland lake and looking for a trail. Well, this looks promising here. A tiny bit of flagging tape. Have a look and see what kind of shape it's in. Pretty good trail so far. So that wasn't a bad trail at all, but I thought it was going to turn north. It kept going east, and then eventually I realized it was heading toward a different lake. So yet again, I'm shocked by the number of trails going to the lakes, the inland lakes on these islands. So I'm gonna backtrack and go over here, see if I can find a different trail. I could go to that lake, but it's twice as far and doesn't look as scenic on the top graphic map. So that's hard to justify. I also stepped in a huge pile of bear poop, so I'm gonna take that as a bad omen. I think this could be it. Yep, this has gotta be it. Found a souvenir for Aaron. Nice chunk of chaga. I'm gonna saw it off, but leave the stump so it can continue growing. There it is. On the outside, it looks like it's been terribly burnt, but that's good stuff. On the inside, it's like an orangey brown. And it's supposed to be one of the most antioxidant rich things that are on earth. We make tea with it at home. And the chaga growth should survive and continue growing. Okay, just made it through. Nice looking lake, trail wasn't too bad. Climbed uh, 50 meters over a 370 meter trail. So it was a fair climb, but hopefully it's gonna be worth it. And I'd really like to camp on this lake, call it a shorter day. They've all been quite long so far. There are a few small islands here that could be good. Found somewhere to camp here on this little island. Pretty central to the lake, great view, nice spot. It's pretty bushy and rugged, but I like it. Just had a much needed nap. Now dinner, and then I'm gonna hit the water and see if I can find any fish. I trolled the shoreline looking for a campsite, nothing, but I'm gonna try deeper. If it's a trout lake, which I hope it is, then that's probably the play.
cold wind blowing in off the lake. Producing tons of fog still. Fish on. Pretty sure it's a speck. Brook trout. Speckled trout. It came into a, a shallower section that has a bit of depth, maybe 15 feet. Brook trout can be found shallow. Oh, oh man, what a fight, what a fight. There's a laker. Let me see. A lake trout, I think. Yeah. Oh, I was not expecting that. I had a hunch it was a speck lake. But any trout is beautiful. Nice little laker, thank you. Little Cleo, silver and green. I had a hunch that it was a brook trout lake because that Laker would be considered on the small side for Superior. So why would people bust their hump getting into here to fish for smaller Lakers? There are different seasons. So for instance, brook trout here is part of a different zone. On Superior, it's hard to get a brook trout you can actually keep because they have to be at least 21 inches, I think. So on the islands, it's different, but if this is a lake trout lake, then that's strange. Another one on. Definitely a trout. Crazy rolls. I'm gonna let this one go at the side of the boat. Okay. Okay. One sec, buddy. One sec. There he goes. Perfect. Lake trout can't stand warm water, like at the surface here, so it's important that they get back down deep fast if being released. Calling it a day here. Great day. Day six, hoping to squeeze in breakfast before the rain comes. Weather's supposed to take a turn for the worse for the next three days or so. And I think I'll just base camp here. I was debating whether to head back to Superior or go to a new lake. I'm gonna base camp here and try to get to the next lake. For breakfast this morning, we've got spinach and mushroom risotto. Slowly drifting down the lake toward the next one. And I'm really happy to be spending two nights here. Not only do I not have to move camp, but very peaceful here, very quiet, except for the birds, which are calling all the time. I love it. Looks like the start of a trail here. Noticed it yesterday when I was looking for a campsite. Let's check it out. Sometimes they look like a trail, but it's just a beaver trail or something, but this looks pretty good. So there's camp in between those two spruces down there on the island. And the trail started out really nice. Started to crowd and then it hit this old forest fire and I have no idea where it went so I'm going to take some bushwhacking and scouting on this one. Made it through. It's a nice looking lake but taking the canoe through is going to be a lot tougher. I'll be clearing for a while on this one. Well, that ended up being a pretty big job but weather is fantastic still and the bugs weren't bad on that trail at all. So winning overall and I get to fish this lake now. Have it all to myself, obviously. Yeah, 
Yep. That's what I feared. Pike. Really small pike. Oh, good, he got off. Hmm. Seems like a really shallow lake. Wouldn't really expect anything else to be in here, but keep trying. Who knows, maybe there's some big ones. There have to be. That, oh, moose, moose. Oh, big, nice moose. Oh, no, he's going off. No, no, no. Head over there. Might be able to see the top of his head right now. Oh. I was reaching for the 600 millimeter lens. Awesome though, had a nice rack. Okay, well that's a pretty good start to this lake. Quick bite and a bull moose. Yeah, no sign of him, but that was awesome. Really nice bull, with a pretty big rack for mid-July. I can see the hills from the last lake behind me. It's quite scenic here, these beautiful flowers. Thunder in the distance, but nothing here yet. This is great. Another Tiny pike, get off, perfect. Oh man, <laughs> I like pike a lot, but I don't bust my hump into back lakes to get them. Really nice to get a shot of that moose. For me, it's like hunting, trying to get footage of wild animals. And if there was ever a job that tempted me, it would probably be like a wildlife videographer for Nat Geo or something. Obviously, I don't have the credentials for something like that, but I love what they do. It'd be so amazing to just sit there waiting for that moment and then to finally get it. It would be so satisfying. That's how I feel about film, filming moose and whatnot, even though I've seen lots of them in my life. And speaking of which, Aaron texted me on the SATCOM and said that Puckasaw recently posted a, po a photo of a cougar from their trail cams. And cougars are not really known to be around here. Puckasaw is just about 100 kilometers to the east. Xander and I just did a big trip there. So that's pretty incredible that they got a cougar on trail cam. Another one on, but it seems also small. Yep. Oh, almost jumped in the boat. <laughs> Saw what I think is another trail heading in the direction of a, a small pond. Could go down that rabbit hole endlessly, so I'm gonna leave it. But of course I'm imagining that that's where the brook trout are. But some dark clouds are moving in, so I think I'll head back and leave this Dink Pike Lake behind. Naturally, I had to fish a little more after I said I, I, said I was done, but it's the same old Back to home base, really hoping to get fish for dinner. It's funny how when you actually want to have a fish fry, you have time, you're in the mood, conditions are good, is when you absolutely can't get a bite. It's scientifically proven by me. It's my life's work. Last cast.
Good morning. Day 7. Ambiance the last 12 hours has been off the charts. Sunset was nice, but then it got dark enough after sunset and before moonrise for some stargazing, which was great. Now, waves are crashing on the coast. I can hear that along with big, deep booms of thunder. And then a red sun is rising. Ominous. Hopefully, I'm heading back to Superior today, so hopefully conditions are alright out there. Looks like the wind's going to kick up, so it's early. I'm going to try and get out there while it's calm. This lake has been amazing. Time to get back to Superior. Beautiful. I didn't notice this on the way in because there wasn't enough water, I guess, but with the rain, I heard it. Starting to get out of this protected cove. It's quite a cold breeze. Let's see if conditions are okay for paddling out on the open lake. Conditions look fine for now, but I'm expecting it to worsen in the afternoon. I'll just see how far I can get. The problem is there are long exposures on the south end of this island. You could easily paddle half an hour or more without a single good spot to pull off the water and it can get a lot worse fast. So I have to keep evaluating and see how long it can go today. I've been working my way back down the coastline toward my start point. And I've been trying to go to different islands and bays to make a difference. Felt like a totally different paddle. But I'm back at the sea caves and I'm happy to see them again. This is a stop to do twice. I could see this a thousand times and it wouldn't get old. It's truly incredible. And the last last year when I came through, I think I said I didn't get to see it because the waves were smashing up in here. I didn't even imagine that it was paddleable because the waves just filled it right up. But yeah, that's amazing. Love that. an island coming up that looks like the head of a giant crocodile. Taking a break under this big rock wall. It's completely dry. Tempted to camp under it. So pretty early though. But as I was pulling up to the beach, I had a total my precious moment where I saw the ring and reach down for it. Just the beautiful stones 
speckled with blue. I don't know what that is. And there's incredible rocks within this wall as well. This is cool. I'm gonna check this spot out. Stunning formation. I'm gonna toss a little water on it, see if it brings it out more even. A lifetime of skipping rocks. These stone beaches are fascinating and up at the top of them sometimes there's an elevated beach and it's covered in lichen and my guidebook says that they're very slow growing so it's best to stay off them, very sensitive so I'll stop my exploration here but I'm very tempted to camp on the lower section there. This is so cool. Conditions are surprisingly good on the lake and it's really nice to be able to get out on shore like this and really smell the roses. So I, along with the board of directors, have made the executive decision to stay. I just can't resist. There's a perfect stool here, an overhanging rock for shelter to set up the tent under, and another incredible rock. All of these things have swayed me. This one looks like a piece of bubble gum that someone spat out, and it turned into a rock. It's wild. This is home for tonight. Snow anchors in winter. This is really too cool. In my glory, even the birch bark here is incredible. It's like sea scrolls. It's solid. I tapped a stick on it and the stick broke. Not that one. But rain's holding off, but it doesn't matter. Got a roof. I had a moment here where I was thinking, where am I going to cook and things when, when the rain comes? I'll be kind of sequestered to my tent. And it dawned on me. Gonna cook up some celebratory burritos. Spirits are very high. Couple burritos, coffee. This is fantastic. Mm. This is maybe the most unique campsite I've ever stayed at. Incredible. Just stopped raining, but you can see where it's dry. These are some of the amazing rocks I've found so far. The tiny little balls of rock inside there, colored. And then some that look more like bubblegum spat out. It's just unreal. Really nice place to chill out here and eat. Got firewood prepped for the stick stove. And back there, where I keep the ancient sea scrolls, sacred, right at the back of the cave. That's Lieutenant Slug back there. His job is to patrol the sea scrolls, ensure that they're safe. Keep things comfortable in here on the rocks. I've got some pads, life jacket, dry bags, dry suit, just so it's not, nothing's poking into me, puncturing my pad. CCF pad would be great here, but I didn't bring one on this trip. It should be great. Starting a new book.
amazing how quickly the fog moves in. Just watch it race in here as it was starting to clear up. The rain's got to be coming pretty soon. Yeah, I'm loving this spot. So glad I stopped here. Feels so sheltered. Such a paradise. Pretty sizable waves rolling in here. Aaron texted me the wave height forecast that said two to three feet, which seems about right. But it's already settling down. The worst of the storm was in the middle of the night. The wind is let up, so. But look at this line of dry and wet. How sweet it is. a bit of a challenge to get through these breaking waves that's obvious beyond there it looks quite calm but there's certainly a swell it's deceiving and the, those swells can come up and break unexpectedly so I'm gonna give it a bit the wind forecast it should keep settling down so no rush Lost a fair bit of sleep last night checking the waves to make sure they weren't coming up too close. It always sounded like they were right there. They never were. But this coffee's gonna feel good. Okay, with coffee prepared, it's time to start the work day. Can't all be fun and games around here at John Terrio Mining Industries. Someone's gotta keep the lights running, someone's gotta keep a roof over our heads, so to speak. Today the board of directors and I, that's you have some important decisions to make about the future of this company. We've run into a situation where we have too many beautiful rocks and on behalf of our stakeholders we've called this vote. You're more of a silent partner and you've proxied your vote to me. I'll, I'll use it wisely. But we have to select one or two rocks out of these 20 to 30 to bring home to Aaron. These are dire times for our organization. Make no mistake, we've never faced a crisis like this in our history of one day of operations. But we need to pull up our socks and get through this together. Who's with me? Everyone else is fired. So many incredible little geodes. I don't know how we'll decide. This one would be probably the winner if the outside wasn't white. It just doesn't make the quartz pop. And one of them, this one, actually has a bit of purple in it. That's really cool. After many hours of deliberation, I believe we've come to a decision that is in the best interest of our stakeholders. Purpley, maybe that's amethyst, I don't know. We're not geologists here at John Terrio Mining Industries. This one's just beautifully colored, shiny, and then this one's just such beautiful white quartz. So, that's good work today, people. Let's call it a day. Head home to our PlayStations. As amazing as these rocks are, I'm hesitant to bring any home. It's just stuff. What am I gonna do with them? People come over, I'm gonna say, hey, you wanna look at my rocks? When Aaron and I are hanging out at home, I say, hey, let's go check out the rock collection. Like, I'm just gonna sit there on a shelf and do nothing. So, I'd rather leave them here other people can have the same treasure hunt. That's that's the fun of them. 
Wow. Big waves breaking there. Don't think I'll be leaving quite yet. But it's turning into a beautiful day. Pale gray, misty, really gorgeous. curry this morning with naan. Looking good boys. Doesn't look like I'll be paddling anytime soon. The waves are pretty bad. There's no winds, but the lake's still just unsettled from the storm last night. Wind is supposed to build today and tomorrow as well, and now I'm fearing about getting back. There's always a risk stopping on a day like yesterday when you have good conditions that you might not get them again for a bit. It seems to be the case here. To go out on a day like today in an open canoe is just asking to be slammed against these jagged rocks like a washing machine. But it's been beautiful to walk down the rocks. Amazing to see all the life that's on them. Spider webs and saxifrage and grass. Lots of little flowers and bugs and tadpoles in the splash pools. Not to mention the rock is embedded with geodes everywhere. It's an amazing ecosystem. two beauties here in this chasm, that spider too. So I was hoping to get home to Aaron tonight. I'm within a full day's paddle of my access point. That doesn't look like it's happening today. I don't know if I'll be able to get on the water at all today. And tomorrow looks pretty breezy too, so. I knew there was a risk in staying here yesterday when I had good conditions still, but it has to be worth it because this has been amazing here. So the fog cleared and the lake got drastically calmer. But now there's not enough time left in the day to be worth taking down camp and setting up a new camp just to get a couple of hours of paddling in. So I set an alarm for 5 a.m. I'm, I'm hopeful that there'll be some paddling, a paddling window at that point. Is that not a perfect shark? And even from the bottom. Beautiful sunset for the last night of the trip, if I can get out tomorrow. 
and if I can get good paddling conditions tomorrow for the final stretch, that would be the perfect way to end this trip. This morning, certainly good enough to head out. A bit swelly, but I'll take it. I'm taking advantage of the islands whenever I can find them. Point, beetle point coming up where I worry it might be a little rough. Coming around beetle point now, all good here. Two open water crossings are the only real obstacles left for this trip. Oh, 16 kilometers left. Right at the eastern tip of Simpson Island, through it, all good. Now for the open water crossing, 2.5 kilometers as the crow flies. Looks good. calm spot now but in typical superior fashion it whipped up right in the middle of that crossing there's an onshore swell and offshore wind and crossing that big straight they were meeting and really peaking yeah it wasn't a, it wasn't a relaxing paddle so this trip might not be over yet sea cave, that one's pretty deep. So I'm officially windbound again, and it's a real change of scenery for tonight picnic table, well-established campsite under these huge spruces, really nice. This campsite's on an island in a protected harbor and it's still very windy and, and fairly choppy on the water. Out on the open lake, it's pretty rough. It just wasn't worth it. I've got maybe eight kilometers of paddling left and I could either have a grueling, potentially dangerous paddle for the next two to three hours to get out or spend a really pleasant day here on land and especially tonight, I want to stick around for. There should be some really good stargazing, maybe even northern lights. I will chill afternoon, rest up, and be wide awake for a good night of watching the sky. What do you call it when you step on a flower by accident? An oopsie daisy.
beautiful final evening here. I'm gonna hit the hay, try to get a couple hours of sleep, and wake up around midnight for some stargazing. This is why I stayed another night. This is the best night sky I've ever seen. Milky Way, Big Dipper, all the constellations, and northern lights. Incredible colors, beams shooting up into the sky. Loon calling, fireflies even. This is unreal. What a finale. A beaver just slaps his tail, I don't know if you heard that. Oh, and, and the forest is alive tonight. There are a lot of critters moving. Even along the shoreline, I heard things splashing, probably ducks or otter or something like that. But wow, this night is alive. Day 10, another pre-sunrise start. Make sure nothing whips up on me. As I was trying to fall back to sleep last night, here's what I was thinking. Within a span of eight hours, there was a beautiful sunset. A few hours later, that same sun, which had shot out charged particles perhaps days earlier, they move a lot slower than the speed of light collided with our magnetosphere, creating the northern lights. Meanwhile, there are billions of other stars above us, and floating space debris collides with our atmosphere and burns up, streaking across the night sky. Little fireflies are flitting around in front of my face, lighting themselves up with bioluminescence. Next, a big orange moon rises that looks like a cookie that someone took a big bite out of. And then to cap off the mere eight hour period, another beautiful sunrise, and Lake Superior, the word that I always seem to circle back to with this lake is magic. I really believe there is some kind of magic to it. It's holy, sacred. It's a church of a lake. And to spend 10 days alone here on it, and on its islands, was nothing short of a religious experience. Shown here as they get toward Rossport. Yeah. Final stretch into Rossport here, and I meant to touch on something. Is Lake Superior the biggest lake on Earth? Yes, it's the largest freshwater lake by surface area on Earth. Lake Baikal is deeper and has more volume but less surface area. Caspian Sea has more surface area, but it's not fresh water. It has a third of the salinity of an ocean because it got disconnected from the ocean long ago. So, not being fresh water doesn't seem, seem like much of a lake to me. And personally, I'd rather have surface area than depth because I don't own a submarine. But any of the three could be said to be the largest. Superior is my favorite. 